Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romney. So how many of you have ever said this about your narcissistic relationship? I can't live with them. I can't live without them. When I hear that phrase, you want to know what goes through my head? Trauma bond. Let's break that down. This is the challenge, right, of the narcissistic relationship. I can't live with them. I can't live without them. But really what you've done, and it gives you, people like trauma bond, it all sounds so complex. It's really not. It's that. And this conversation about trauma bonding gets so complicated and a lot of people struggle with what is it? Let me tell you what it's not because I've seen this common misconception out there in the internet world is that a trauma bond is a relationship between two people who have been through trauma and that's what joins them. You know, like that Keanu Reeves movie, what was that movie? Speed with the fast bus. It's not that. It's possible that two people who are trauma bonded have had trauma, but it's definitely not a requirement, okay? So the trauma bond is the intense connection that gets fostered in a relationship through the alternation of good moments and emotional abuse. And usually there's more bad moments than good moments. The good moments can be on a continuum. It's not all, you know, fireworks, right? It can simply be someone pays attention to you at times, all the way to full court love bombing. And the middle may just be what feel like normal days. And the emotional abuse obviously would include things like invalidation, rage, manipulation, betrayal, humiliation. This alternation between good and bad results in a person making excuses and justifications and rationalizations, which cements the connection with the abusive person. Now, trauma bonded people live their lives in a permanent purgatory of I know I need to get out of this, but I can't figure it out, or I'm not ready, or I'm afraid to. And that fear is not just based on realistic fears of post-separation abuse or violence, but just that I'm afraid what my life would be like without this person. Now, trauma-bonded relationships can really be coded in magical thinking. I can't describe what it is about this relationship. It's this crazy connection. It's almost magical, like, I don't even know, like metaphysical. And you know my hack with clients to help them see the trauma bondedness of their relationships. And if you don't, here it is. When a client I suspect is trauma bonded, is talking about their partner or their relationship, I will get to a point where I'll just simply ask them in an open and non-judgmental way, hey, can you tell me what it is you like and what you love about your partner? Invariably, the answer to that question is they get quiet for a minute. They look off to the distance, maybe up to the ceiling. They squinch up their mouth. Maybe they hold their chin. They say, hmm, it's a few deep sighs. And they say, I don't know. Let me think. I don't know. I don't know. It's like beyond words. It's like, it's just, it's, it's, it's this feeling like, yeah, I can't articulate it. For shits and giggles, when I do ask clients who are in healthy relationships this same question, they'll say things like, I have tremendous respect for her. We have a history. We have shared values. Or he makes me laugh. Or I feel safe with them. We've built something together. We have similar interests. We love spending time together. There's a difference. But it these relationships, if you really want to understand it, it boils down to a damned if I do, damned if I don't intersection that colors all narcissistic relationships. I can't live with them and I can't live without them. We don't even need to break down why you can't live with them. So I'm not even going to waste time talking about that. But the bigger issue is the idea that you can't live without them. And that is the trauma bond piece. Obviously, you could live without anyone. You'd be fine, but you really believe you can't live without them. The idea of one of these relationships ending can leave a trauma-bonded person filled with panic. Like, wait, wait, what if I'm making a mistake? Maybe it isn't that bad. Maybe I'm the problem. It feels like it's getting better. Oh, what if they move on? And what if they forget me? Or I'm just not ready. Sometimes issues like the fear of being alone can creep in as well. But the trauma bond gets revealed by the I can't live without them statement, despite all the bad things that are happening. Sometimes people make pithy statements like, well, they're the devil I know. And oh, I know I'm a little bit of a handful myself. Eh, you probably aren't. 
Now, people sometimes struggle to understand what the trauma bond is. But if you can think of it this way, this idea of can't live with them, can't live without them, and you find that you really aren't able to come up with any meaningful reasons that this relationship is healthy, those are good signs. Now, I know that some people are afraid to consider this idea that their relationship may reflect a trauma bonded situation because they do often believe that it means then that they would have to end it. Recognizing these patterns in yourself and in your relationship don't mean that you have to push the accelerator on a change that you aren't ready to make, but it can be a wake up call to consider therapy and recognizing that if the time comes that you decide to cut out of a trauma bonded relationship, it's never going to be comfortable. But a good place to start is to stop the justifying and the rational, rationalizing and the excuses. Simply recognizing the unhealthy behavior as unhealthy, that's often an essential first step. So again, I can't live with them, can't live without them. So many people say this. Some people say it jokingly, but this is not the affectionate take on this. That idea that I can't live without them, A, sort of devalues you. You almost feel like some of your life force is coming from the relationship. It is also a reminder that no matter what, ending a trauma bonded relationship, whether it's a year in or 40 years in, is always going to be difficult. And although a lot of this is sort of framed in sort of intimate relationships, this matters in family relationships too. Obviously for many people, the original trauma bond is with a family member and it can even be with a sibling. But in those relationships, it gets even more complicated because you might feel that same sense of, I can't live with them. I can't live without them, certainly. But there's also the societal pressure and even the internal pressure you feel that families should stay close that family should be in touch, that there's something wrong with you or shameful if you don't do that. But it's also that sense of that breathlessness of what if I'm wrong? And that's another real ringer for what sort of defines that trauma bonded relationship. Your body has known for a long time that this relationship is not good for you. Whether you feel it in a million signs and signals or may very well be that you get sick the more time you spend in the relationship. But no matter how loudly your body is talking to you, still your mind can be one hell of a gaslighter. But ultimately, that idea, damned if I do, damned if I don't, is the core of the trauma bond. And I hope that this explanation kind of takes this sort of theoretical concept and helps you see it more clearly and how it may have played out in your relationship. Thanks again.